you know, the, the gain of function, actually, there is that one CRISPR experiment, speaking of interesting science out of China, a guy, he actually was a postdoc at Stanford, um, worked for a guy named Steve Quake, and then separately on his own, without permission or anything from Stanford, went off and started his own laboratory in China and stood up at a meeting a few years ago and said he had done CRISPR in human babies. This has been done. Yeah, he, he, he was arrested for this, right? Yeah, he, he mutated the HIV receptor, which everyone thinks, okay, that was designed to prevent these babies from getting HIV. It turns out that that mutation is thought to perhaps enhance memory by sort of parallel mechanisms. And then it was very unclear for a short while whether or not this guy was either going to get a Nobel Prize or whether or not they were going to throw him in jail. And so everyone was very tense and waiting in my community, thinking, okay, because when somebody's kind of up for a big discovery like this, everyone kind of circles maybe wanting that maybe they should be involved in getting the accolades. But as the moment that the international community, I think rightfully so, said, this is horrible. You can't do this. There's no ethics committee. You need to think about what you're doing. Everyone was like, I had nothing to do with this guy. I never had anything. And, you know, there was a deep excavation of emails and all sorts of everyone was like, I got nothing to do with this guy. So it was pretty interesting. Then China said, oh, we're going we're gonna to punish him. But I'd be willing to bet both hands that he's, his punishment consists of a jail cell that is pretty luxurious with a laboratory. There's no question that CRISPR is going on there. CRISPR is going on in certain regions of, you know, yeah. of, you know uh, other, other locations on the globe where things aren't as regulated because think about the potential payoff for being able to rescue a Huntington's mutation, right? A Huntington's Korea mutation that has somebody at some point in their life, you know, but un, un, able to control their arms, hemiballismus of the arms. If what we is want, it? Hemi, uh, Huntington's disease, it's a deterioration of the parts of the brain that control motor function. The parts of the brain that control motor function have two main pathways. One is a go pathway, like reach for this coffee mug, and the other one is a no-go pathway, resisting movement. And the no-go pathway degenerates substantially, other things too, and people with Huntington's Korea end up with these writhing ballistic movements, oh, and it's wow. an inherited disease. So you know what gene, it's the Huntington gene. And if you can, if you know that your, for instance, parent has it, you can get tested for it. A lot of people don't want to get tested. They don't want the answer because it's late onset. So you can be normal a certain portion of your life and then get it. It's a tragic disease. But if you test positive for this gene, you know you're going to get Huntington's. In which case, with CRISPR, you could just put the gene back in and rescue function. What causes someone to eventually succumb to that disease? If it's a late onset disease, if they don't have it when they're young and they develop when they get older, what changes? Yeah, so it's not just deterioration of those particular neurons. It's it's deterioration of the neurons that control those neurons. You know, everything's working in a kind of a top-down suppression all the time. In fact, um, the head neurosurgeon at Neuralink, who's somebody I know quite well named Matthew McDougall, he came up through my laboratory, and Elon made a great choice in hiring him, um, told me recently, the best way to think about the frontal cortex is that basically its main job, besides picking context and strategy for a given situation, is to tell certain parts of your brain that really want to do things, shh. That's the best mm. description I have ever heard of prefrontal cortex. You know, it, it's what's keeping Jamie from doing things that he shouldn't right now and me doing things that I shouldn't right now. And every time you have a crazy idea, like, maybe I should jump off this bridge. Why would I think that? I'm not. That's a healthy operation of your brain saying, I want to because I'm kind of curious, but I don't want to, so I'm not going to. Right. With Huntington's, what happens is there's a slow deterioration of those neurons, but there's a lot of deterioration of these neurons that control motor function. And eventually what happens is the deeper neurons that control motor function start shutting down the autonomic functions like breathing, heart rate. And so eventually people just succumb to some basic, um, you know, uh, rec we call them housekeeping functions, you know, so mm. they'll, they'll have to be on a respirator and they, they have to, um, you know, they have to use a catheter tube and, you know, they have to defecate into a bag. And, you know, at some point they just become a, a, a deteriorated um, mess of neurons. So what's first to go there, however, is the, the control of motor function. And it goes first in the direction of too much activity because of all these brakes and accelerators that we have in the, in the brain. Um, so in any case, CRISPR, gene manipulation of the sort that this guy did in this laboratory in China, again, I think an ethics com committee needs to tell the world or decide for the world what people should be allowed to do and not do. But you can imagine for something like Huntington's, it would be tremendously advantageous. Like if you had a child who you knew was someday going to get Huntington's, you'd want to do a CRISPR mutation and put the healthy gene back. Is